So while my coaching journey um, started as a desire to get physically fit, what I didn't realize um, when I decided to sign up for the Beach Body app before even coaching was how much physical exercise actually works on your mental state. Um, have you ever done a workout and just started like making horrible noises like screaming or maybe you've dropped to the floor sobbing or finished a workout sobbing? Our bodies are so, are so incredible. The good Lord made our bodies so incredible. What I learned um, in this time is that our bodies hold on to things. They can hold on to emotions. They can hold on to sickness. They can hold on to bacteria. Um, while I was really dropping weight during that first year of coaching, I was sick all the time. Um, my massage therapist, Jerry, who is not only my massage therapist, she's my life coach, she said um, that when you lose weight, especially significant amounts of weight, when your fat stores break down, if there's any old bacteria in there, it comes to the surface. And so it can cause you to be sick. So she encouraged me to buy a sauna, which I found like a super cheap one on Amazon for like three, not even 300 bucks. She said, sit in that two to three times a week, let all that stuff sweat out and you will not be sick, which has worked really well. Um, so just a fun little fact for you there. but. Our bodies hold on to so many things. And um, when, when I think about not letting go of my sexual assault, holding that in, not talking about it, when I think about what my body experienced during those times in Florida, holding that in and not letting it out, um, you know, the sexual assault, that gave me the anxiety, the depression, the IBS, the constipation that 20 years later I'm still dealing with. Um, not talking about the things I experienced in Florida, you know, those manifest in your body. Your body can't, your brain can't take on literally everything. You need other people. You need faith. You need to talk about the things that you struggle with. Those manifest in your body. And if you don't let those go, it can turn into endometriosis. It can turn into fibroid tumors. It's believed that extreme stress causes horrifying things in your body. And when we can't move forward and truly let go and heal from these things as painful as it is our bodies are the ones that are um you know they're taking all the repercussion of that so one thing that i've never faltered in since deciding to become a coach so beach body every day you, they give us like a tracker and they say work out share inspire your journey be a product of the product so follow your meal plan um, drink your shake and then they say um, you know you connect share and invite so that's meeting new people but the number one thing on the list is personal development spend three to ten minutes every day on a personal development journey based on the season of life that you're in personally and for your business and I added that last part for myself because I think that um, you need both I can read my Bible for my business and personal. Um, I like to have a specific business focused faith based book. Um, and so what I do every single morning, even when I worked in um, corporate marketing, I had to get up at four o'clock every morning. I did 13 minutes of a miracle morning, which I will talk to you about in a second. And then I did ate a quick little bite of breakfast and I did my workout because of that 80 day program I told you about where I had my best transformation ever. The programs are like anywhere from 35 minutes to an hour. So I had to have significant time. I had a 36 minute commute to work. So I had to leave before seven in the morning. So I needed that time in the morning, but I know I have learned in case and case and case, Time and time and time again, I know that if I don't start my first moments in the morning with Jesus, that the, all the rest of my day is going to go to shit. Um, so our workout group, our fit family, we do a miracle morning every morning and we'll post, um, I run it with my coaches and so we'll post a song or a podcast. Um, a lot of times I'll share in our little chat, I'll share the devotional, snapshot of the devotional that I'm reading. Um, spend one minute doing some kind of prayer um one minute reading scripture something one minute journaling how you're going to apply what you read 
it's not enough to just read it. I read things all day, every day. I just looked through, I cleaned up my office this week. I have tons of these little note things that I've been going to do time and time and time again. If you don't actually do it, it doesn't actually matter. So it's not enough to just read and make a plan. You have to implement. Joyce Meyer, one of my all time favorite people in the entire world, says, choose the pain of discipline or the pain of regret. You get to choose. Simple choice. You're either willing to do the work or you're not. You're willing to painfully pursue Jesus, no matter the cost, or you're not. And it's hard. And I think we would all agree that when you ask God into your life, things don't just get easier. Life does not just become fruitcakes and butterflies and, you know, lemon blueberries. It gets harder. Within six months of asking God back into my life, I got laid off. I just bought a boat with my mom. I got laid off the Monday after. My brother got shot. I had to move away from my home and leave my dog. And then I started hemorrhaging, which led to medical menopause, three surgeries, hysterectomy. And in all of those moments, I started every day with prayer. Some days I spend five to 10 minutes in prayer. Some days I spend a minute. Some days I spend 30 seconds. Some days I may spend 30 seconds in the morning, but I talk to God all day long. That's what I want. That's what I want for you. A prayer doesn't have to be a moment where you sit down in a quiet space and you fold your hands and you just like say all the things that are perfect that you're supposed to say. No. He wants us to come to him in every moment of every day. So some of the people that inspire me most um, are Joyce Meyer because she's a no nonsense, no bullshit kind of woman. And I appreciate that because that's the lady I want to be. And she says that everything is small to God. So many times we want to bring him our big things. We don't Pray for small things because we don't want to waste his time. Okay, but we forget that God created the entire world, everything in it on, in six days, and then he like took a nap, okay? Everything is small to him. He could fix the biggest struggles in your life, your infertility, your finances, your relationships, your addictions. He could fix it all in a second. But why would he do that if you're not willing to give him the first few moments of your day or any part of your day. We have become such a society that wants to control everything that we forget we ain't in control of nothing. In the morning, I'm like, okay, Lord, help me figure out what to wear. So I, I'm sweaty. Like I'm wearing a sweatshirt right now and I've pitted through it. Like that is the person that I am. I work part-time at a preschool. I'm up and down on the floors. I'm helping kids do things. I'm picking them up. I'm putting them down. I say every morning, Lord, please let me wear it. Find the thing to wear where I'm going to be comfortable. I'm not going to get too hot or too cold. Joyce Meyer prays for her hair. Lord, please let me have a good hair day today. Why would you not? Why would you not bring him everything? Lord, what should I eat for lunch today? About that time. What should I eat for lunch today? This morning I got done with my workout, had a shake and a banana. And I was like, what am I going to have for lunch today? I wasn't even hungry. Why does it matter? Lord, give me the thing I need right now in this moment. Give me the words I need. When Daryl and I are having a discussion about things, maybe we're having a happy discussion. Maybe we're not having a happy discussion. I'll say, Lord, give me the words. Because a lot of times, most of the times, I don't know what to say. I don't have the answers. I am fighting to live every day the best I can, struggling just like every other human out there. The difference is, I'm going to say, Lord, I'm going to need some joy right now. Or sometimes you don't even have to say anything. He already knows. He knows the things that you need. He knows the things that you want. He knows the greatest desires of your heart. Stop 
acting like he doesn't. Stop False humility is something that I have experienced over and over and over and over and over, um, especially the last couple of years. And false humility, it's very dangerous. Um, false humility is, let me give you an example. So as a Christian entrepreneur, I want to make a million dollars a year. I do. I don't want to worry about money anymore. I'm sick of it. I have been living paycheck to paycheck since I got laid off. I have, and it sucks. I was making, I mean, I was making fat cash for a single girl in this one stoplight town. I didn't worry about money. I'd saved up five grand and put $20,000 $20, in a 401k in no time. Like, that's how much money I was making. It's all gone because I got laid off, because I started hemorrhaging and I couldn't focus on my business, because I was so exhausted that I couldn't work. I had to go back to work part-time. <clears throat> when I say I want to make a million, a million dollars a year, I want to give it all away. I do. Oh, well, you're not supposed to covet money as a Christian. Oh, you're not supposed to want... Okay, where in the Bible does it ever say live paycheck to paycheck? The Bible says... Take care of widows and orphans. Did you ever see Jesus walking around in shabby clothes or like not the coolest sandals of the day? No, you didn't. It's our moral and ethical obligation as believers to fund the causes that he puts in our heart. Don't like seeing homeless kids? Don't like seeing homeless veterans? Don't like seeing abused dogs? Who's going who's gonna to donate to those causes? Who is out there that's going to just do that? That's our job. Our job is to take care of the widows and orphans. I would love to go in and completely redo the nursing home that my grandma lives in. Because it smells bad and it's depressing. And I don't blame her for being pissed for living in there. Our elderly people deserve to live in the freaking Ritz-Carlton. Yes, they do and eat the best food cooked by chefs. Who's going to pay for that? We can make a freaking million dollars a year. Do it. Give to the causes that set your heart on fire, that keep you awake at night, that when you get super passionate about it, you start to get a little teary. I want to make a wish. I would love to do the um, the Christian radio station in our local area, WBCL. They always do the Make-A-Wish. It's $8,000 to Make-A-Wish. I would love to make three wishes a year at least. What if I could make the wish of three little kids who are dealing with cancer? What, what would that do for them? How would that change their lives, those memories? What would that do for their family? Your false humility of living paycheck to paycheck, thinking that you can't do hard things, you can't build the life you want to, build the business that you want to, make the difference that you want to, it's bullshit. It is the devil filling you with lies. And that is not biblical truth. Crap happens in this world. We fail at things. People say, well, why do bad things happen? Especially, you know, if God exists, why do bad things happen? Look at you. Why do you have so much faith when all of this crap has happened to you in your life? Okay, well, because Eve ate off that damn tree. That's why. We live in a fallen world. That's just the fact of the matter. Eve was PMSing. She thought she knew better than God. She wanted all of the things that he had. So she went ahead and took it for herself. And before you start pointing fingers, ladies, let's start thinking about the control that we have wanted to keep in our lives. God could have zapped them off the earth, but he didn't. He moved them out of the garden, yes, because grace. He gave them another chance to live, to create to continue to create life, which is where we all come from. 
things are going to happen to you in this life. You're going to want to build a business and it's going to fail. I started building a pure romance business probably about 15 years ago. Is that where God wanted me? No. I was an unmarried, unhappy woman. Sex is great for married couples. We're going to talk about that too. But that wasn't the place for me. Corporate marketing wasn't the place for me. I never thought being an online fitness coach would be the place for me, but my job ain't fitness. My job is to share with every woman out there the possibilities that can happen when you let go of your own self-control, when you let go of the fear and the doubt and trust and believe that God has your best and sometimes you've just got to sit back and let him work. But that doesn't mean that you don't work. That doesn't mean you get an easy ride. That means you trust that the things he's placed in front of you, that you can grab a hold of and make your own for the betterment of the kingdom. False humility has no place in a Christian woman's life. So if that's something you're struggling with, get your Bible out and read what scripture says. Don't take my word for it.